Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. My name is Muhammad Shafiq bin Muhammad Yusri, matric number 1193032. I'm from KAD1 for the subject Orientalism and Christian Mission. InsyaAllah, today I'm going to present about the historical emergence of Orientalism and Christian Mission. In this video, I'm going to share about first the history of Christian mission, second, the history of, of the Orientalism, third, Orientalism by Edward Said, and last but not least, the impact of the Orientalism on the Muslim contemporary. First of all, we have to know who are Orientalism and Christian missionaries. Orientalism is a way of seeing and thus defining Middle Eastern and Asian cultures as interfering, backward, exotic, or in need of rescuing by the Western world. Second, Christian missionaries. Christian missionaries are the people who are obeying Christ and relying on Christ alone. The Lord sends missionaries through the supports of the church to the unreached people. All the followers of Christ have the missions of reconciliation which means that all believers should prioritize helping the lost people and bring the christian to them okay the history of the christian mission christian missionary has long been developed and influenced by several figures and also from the teachings of the gospel from the new testament among the figures involved are first apostle paul Second, the Apostle Thomas, and also the Pope Gregory the Great. First, Apostle Paul, he was most motivated to start the missionary movement because of his great obedience to the Great Commission, which is to spread the gospel in a great way, not only to Rome, but went along to Greece. Second, the Apostle Thomas, he is one of Paul's friends in order to finish the missionary Christian. He did a different thing than Paul because he is focusing on the India. For example, today in India, almost 1.7 billion people know who is Thomas because of his great contribution to that country. Uh, the last figure is Pope Gregory the Great. He, Pope Gregory the Great, are coming from Rome and has his name attached to the Gregorian mission movement. Before the coming of the Gregory the Great, England was largely pagan, but after he came, not only England, along with the rest of Europe, became Christian. Okay, next we move to the history of the Orientalism. The East or Orient has long fascinated Western scholars, businessmen, rulers, and citizens alike. This interest influenced many areas of scholarly research, as well as political dominance, art, and other cultural symbolism. One of the most prominent Orientalists of the 18th century was William Jonas, a traditional Orientalist. Jonas was a scholar versed in the knowledge of the Orient, its language, languages, literatures, etc. His interest in the East focused primarily on their legal texts and he learned Sanskrit in order to translate them. Besides, uh, Orientalism by Edward Said. In Orientalism, Edward Said critiques Orientalism as a discipline and Orientalists, those who study the Orient as a whole, he believes that they can, they can never truly know the East for a variety of reasons. The West dominated the Orient political particularly for so long that most of the Middle East and the East in general had very little autonomy and therefore was shaped almost exclusively by the Western powers who were sti simultaneously ruling and studying it. Orientalism for Said is an academic study, a distinction the West created creates a dichotomy be between themselves and the East. The, the co corporate institution for dealing with the Orient, all ones, 
this definition as I notes are interdependent. Next, we move to the impact of the Orientalism on the Muslim contemporary or from the Muslim uh, community. First, the spread of Oriental studies among Muslims and their, their country was affected by Western rooted into Muslim community, whether from the leaders, thinkers, politicians to the public who leads to the separation of religion and life. Second, while the Islamic faith is tied to every element of life with faith in God Almighty, which the view in general expressed by Islam according to the decrees of God and can be understood by every level of human intellect. In, in fact, there is an attitude of religious people who do not accept any form of reformation that violates the principles of their existence. These are the effects from the spread of Orientalism among the Muslim community. In a conclusion, we know that Orientalism is a movement of Western scientists who research and discuss the Eastern world, which is Islam uh, in aspect of religion and Muslims. And they also aim to confuse religion and Muslim people. Second, the emergence of Orientalism is motivated by five things, namely religious, imperial, bis imperial business, political, and also scientific motivations. Last but not least, Islam considers that the Orientalists are a group of people from coming from the Jews and Christian. That's all from me. Thank you and Assalamualaikum.